Hello and welcome to the Healthy Speaker Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Vanessa Emerson, founder of the Dental Speaker and Dental Speaker Institute. And I am so happy. I'm internally jumping for joy. Uh, <laughs> today, joining us is Dr. Taryn McCarthy, who is, of course, the business of happiness we can see behind her. And uh, Taryn, thank you so much for being here and talking with me and sharing thoughts for our listeners. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Vanessa. This is such an honor. And I am so excited about this new podcast of yours. It's so <laughs> needed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that podcasting, one of the, the maybe little known um, benefits of it as someone who has a podcast or as a guest, it's just fun. Isn't it just fun to get together and share? It's so fun. And it's also such a great way to stay in connection with one another, especially in our busy lives. It's for me, it's been such a gift to be able to maintain that community. Ah, totally. And that gives me a chance to, um, before we even do an intro, I just want to say, because I don't want to forget, like just to highlight, you had this incredible podcast, um, the business of, uh, is, is, is it called the business of happiness podcast? Yes. Um, Excellent. And so before we go, we're going to leave all the places where we can find you and, and hear more from you. But let's start with learning more about Taryn. Uh, who is Taryn? And, and um, if you don't know Taryn, you need to know Taryn. Uh, I have been just um, really thrilled, like in a very warm and happy calm way about being thrilled with the, the getting to know you and who you are and the the love and the energy that you bring to everyone is just so impressive to me. And the way you have a um, a, a very deep purpose. And so I, I would say I'm, I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit more about your like what brought you here. But I would say when I think of Taryn, one of the first things I think of is friend. Ah, friend. So I know you as friend. I know you as your wife, your mother. You are orthodontist, you are a speaker, you're a coach, you're like all these things, right? And I think one of the true um, gifts that you have is that you have this wonderful way of making everyone feel special and loved. And so I just want to honor that for a minute, because I think that is just really, I, I'm sure anyone who knows you who's listening is like, yes, like <laughs> that this just, you have this way about you. So thank you for shining your light in such a loving, gracious, and um, open way to allow all of us to be authentic. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. That, that really means so much to me. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so grateful to know you and your words matter so much to me. So thank you. That's oh. very, very kind of you. And I receive it. Thank you. You're welcome. So let's start out by who who is Taryn? And you know, what brought you to the business of happiness and then the coaching you're doing around radical happiness, which is such a great term. Like how how did you get here? Thank you for asking. You know, it's so interesting. Just when you said all those wonderful kind words to me, you know, I think that's who I see myself as a really good friend a really empowering person who really cares so deeply about our dental community. And that really is the core of the business of happiness because there was a time in my life where I was not connected to that truth of myself. You know, it's who I have always been. I've always been a very positive, happy, had an enormously positive perspective on life positive perspective on other people and their potential and their, you know, the truth and the authentic parts of them that is so special. I believe so deeply in the good in people. And there was a time in my life I lost that perspective. Mm -hmm. And it was stemmed from enormous stress and overwhelm mm -hmm. and anxiety in the dental profession. I was a practicing orthodontist who had reached the pinnacle of all my dreams. You know, that 19 year old who wants, like, I remember her so excited and passionate about dentistry and marrying artistry and science and leadership and, you know, giving to healing people. I mean, I couldn't imagine a more beautiful profession and being an entrepreneur and creative soul. And I 
reach that pinnacle after putting my nose to the grindstone. And I finally woke up one day and I had everything. I had the practice and the children and the handsome husband and the handsome dogs and the fancy car and the fancy house and the fancy community and a private practice of patience. And I was so miserable, I was so unhappy. And I remember looking at myself in the mirror and not recognizing the person looking back at me and being so scared because I didn't know her and I surely didn't like her. Mm -hmm. And what I knew at the time to do was the only thing I had access to was to run. And so I literally fled everything I possibly could when I had this realization that I was so unhappy and the shame and the guilt that was compounding on it. You know, who am I to have all this success and to not be happy? You know, that was so, the shame was so heavy for me. And so the first thing I did was run and, you know, sold my dental practice, you know, sought out a divorce attorney. I mean, if I could have, I fled the state. If I could have left my husband, I would have. If I could have left my kids, I would have. Mm. I mean, and that was really the beginning of my self-discovery journey. And it's so interesting because I started really asking myself the important questions of what success and happiness was to me because I realized I had been living someone else's definition of success, someone else's definition of happiness, the algorithm I thought I needed to follow to finally be successful, finally be happy was not mine. And I needed to undo a lot of the learning that I had done to find myself. And in doing so in the process of that journey, I actually, around the same time, lost my brother to suicide. Mm -hmm. My brother took his life. Mm -hmm. And when, when I heard those beautiful words you were saying, and thank you again in the introduction of, you know, those were the same words people said about Douglas. He was a bartender and he was everyone's friend and he had perspective of optimism and positivity. And he welcomed people and he coached them. I mean, looking back, he was a coach and he supported people to stand up and be their best. And he was the definition of happiness. He lived a happy life, a free life. And yet he took his own life because he didn't have the tools that he needed to be able to um, face his own challenges. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, I started a very deep journey of my own to try to understand what is happiness. And after losing Douglas, I lost myself even more and lost that definite happiness. And I remember Vanessa saying to myself, I'll never be happy again. Mm -hmm. And when I said that, I realized, oh, wow, I just yeah. abdicated all that power. Yeah. And I thought I need to change my language. I need to change my thoughts. I need to change my beliefs. And I need to take back my life. And that was the beginning of my journey to rediscovering happiness. And where the business of happiness came from is when I recognized these incredible colleagues that we have literally putting smiles on children's faces on a daily basis and bereft of happiness themselves. And so when I had finally found myself and discovered what happiness was for me and what success and empowerment meant for me, I thought I have to support my colleagues in these practices and insights and perspectives so that they could see the brilliance of what they're doing on a daily basis and really love and empower themselves. Because, and I say this on the podcast all the time, when we feel good, that's when we can actually do good. Yeah. When we take care of ourselves and we love and respect and have compassion and grace and forgiveness for ourselves, that's when we can have greater impact on this world and feel really great about ourselves and be there for other people. And that was the beginning of the business of happiness was how do we do that? How do we find enormous success, enormous opportunity to give to our patients and in those moments, find our own happiness and fulfillment? 
Thank you for sharing so authentically uh, your story that I, I anticipate many of our colleagues can relate to. Mm-hmm. Um, going, 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 consulting, speaking, you know, then there's the office, the, the so much that still needs to be done administratively. There's the practicing clinicians that we have that are speaking and consulting and doing all the things that really does. I, I feel this in my own life. Sometimes where it's just exhausting and it's easy to let go of what we know will keep us in alignment and will keep us, you know, the sleep, the food, the exercise, like the simple things that we let go. I, I, you know, I think it's easy for it to slide. Absolutely. And, And I think there's also this whole thing that you were talking about the, it's kind of the, the dream you had when you were younger, this like that, that's the definition of happiness because we don't know, we haven't lived it. Right. And so I find too, as a business coach, I I would share that. I don't think, I don't think happiness is found in seven figures or more a year necessarily. It can be, it can be, um, happiness is where it's not about a number. It's about carving out the life that works for each of us as speakers and consultants share with us some what would be some first steps um, to be able to start regaining that, mm. that happiness? So what were some of the things that worked for you? Yeah, I love that question. You know, I think the first thing is self-reflection. Mm. And really what that is, is awareness, conscious yeah. awareness. Yeah. And we know so many people who've lived their whole lives never asking themselves that question. So you know, I'm sure we can think of people in our own lives who on their deathbed didn't ask themselves, you know, what matters to me? What's important to me? You know, we just put one foot in front of the other. And you alluded to this with what I call the do more mentality. We just think in order to get something like happiness, we have to do more. What do I have to do? (laughs) What do I have to do to be happier? Right. Or what do I have to do to get X, Y, Z? And really, isn't it so interesting that all we have to learn is how to be. Love, love, love that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Give our, and even more so, give ourselves permission to be. And, yeah. you know, if you're listening right now and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I've just been doing, doing, doing my whole life, give yourself enormous compassion and grace because that's what we've been modeled. That's been what we've learned, especially in medicine and dentistry you know, especially in business. What do I need to do? Pay me money so that I can teach you what to do. You know, there's all this, what do I need to do? And in doing so, we're immediately abdicating our power, abdicating our own free will when we're asking, what do I need to do? Just tell me what to do. And so we kind of lose ourselves in that mentality. And so the first, I would say the first step is getting really quiet and stop doing everything. (laughs) Just literally get quiet and be, and it is incredibly uncomfortable when you first do it. Mm -hmm. When you first practice just being and not accomplishing or achieving. I mean, even in the moment, I don't know if any of you have tried it and you think like, well, what can I do while I'm doing that? (laughs) You know, one of my clients said, I was like, can you just sit still and not do anything? She said, well, I kind of, can I do it while I'm reading my emails? No. <laughs> can I do it while I'm listening to an audiobook? You know, we want to constantly be achieving something. So the practice of just being is actually a really challenging thing to master, even to, to yeah. attempt. Like a, you marry that with breath work, right? It's like then, then your busy mind has something to focus on as your breath, at least. But <laughs> Yeah, well... That's a great way to start too, by the way. That's one of the greatest ways to start because in breath work, we're also regulating our nervous system because the reason why it's so difficult to just be is because we've amped up our sympathetic nervous system and we're living in the sympathetic nervous system storm that we're not even aware of. Mm -hmm. And the way we think we need to get out of that is by doing. And really, there's a completely different model that I've coined the live more mindset that I teach in Radical Happiness for Practitioners, which is the step-by-step how to rediscover ourselves 
in this world of medicine and dentistry, in this world of service, in this world of speaking and serving and giving and gifting our gifts to other people and leaving a better place on this earth, that there's a way to access that part of ourselves. And one of them is nervous system regulation, as you mentioned, with breath work or meditation or EFT tapping, or there's so many beautiful ways to do it, but it's a very big component of asking your body to support you in just being. Mm -hmm. I love each of those ideas because it, it's hard. I mean, there's like a train running down the tracks in our mind, right? And so to just stop, that's just going to, it feels like almost go faster. Yes. So giving us something to focus on, I know that definitely helps me. And to remind yourself to keep bringing it back to whatever if it's the, if the meditation or the tapping or the breath work, whatever it is. Yes. And that. let's also not minimize the fact that if you've never done that before, it doesn't feel safe. Mm. So from a psychological perspective, it feels weird. It feels terrifying yeah. to stop doing. Well, what if everything falls apart? You know, we, I get this image of like holding up a house of cards. If I just let go, everything's going to tumble around me. And that's part of the narrative that we tell ourselves. Right. You know, I hear many um, of my clients say, well, I can't, take a vacation from work because I'm just barely holding it together. Or I can't not say no to this opportunity because it's this one opportunity and there might not be another one. We, we have this very fragile, we get this idea that we have a fragile hold on our success or yeah. on our happiness. Fear. Fear. And mm -hmm. so sometimes just stopping actually can activate our nervous system more. Mm -hmm. So once again, another great opportunity for grace and compassion because it can be scary. I love that you share these type of tips because they're just such good um, uh, reminders, but also new information for someone who hasn't, uh, you know, really, you know, I'm a veteran of self-development. Yes, you are. Yes. <laughs> I mean, like for me, this I, goes back to you know, decades, right? Like, but, but we're all at different places and we all I think we all eventually find our way here or we remain in the struggle. So like to, to get our way out of the struggle, we find our way to these type of concepts or these type of, of guys and leaders like, like yourself. Uh, for me early on, it was like Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, Tony Robbins, like, you know, back in the day um, and, and still very much um, helpful information but I love that you share through your social media, there's constant um, reminders and you have your podcast. You have a lot of different ways to share with us. Um, I, I'm going to want to talk to you in a minute about your program. You mentioned radical happiness, but before we go there, so we talked about a first step would be to just stop and step back into the awareness and be able to touch back into like what, what does matter to me. Mm -hmm. what what would be what what do I feel would be um I was just even no noticing this morning for myself I thought I feel too busy in the morning like I want to change that I feel like I've I've pushed my start time back an hour um previously and I think I'm going to make another adjustment to my own schedules entrepreneurs we can do that right but I thought even as I was rushing around trying to do to get ready I thought I'm rushing mm. and I find myself rushing frequently. So I'm go. I, it's the awareness, right? And it's just the being, awareness and taking ownership and saying, this is my life, my one life. I'm going to, I'm going to change this so that I can feel more self relaxation and happiness and self, you know, whatever fulfillment. Um, but what would be a good next step beyond that awareness? Like then, then what? Yeah. Once you get aware, yeah. I think beyond the awareness is compassion. Really, that that is a big, big, big one. And I think especially in our field, uh, and I'm and I'm including dentistry and business ownership and the entrepreneurial um, pursuits as well, because we tend to blame ourselves for not knowing something yeah. sooner, right? Yeah. Like that awareness of, oh, I'm too busy in the mornings, I'm rushing, I should have known, you know, or I should, 
or I should, the, I call it shooting on yourself, right? We start self-judgment of what we should or shouldn't have known or what we should or shouldn't have done, should have done differently. And what we do when we have that self-judgment is we immediately drop ourselves into a lower emotional vibrational state, which is disempowering. And it's almost like you can imagine there's only two states. There's only two emotional states. There's millions of emotions and feelings, and there's so many beautiful ones, but there's only two states and they all fall into one of these two states, either disempowering or empowering. So if you're feeling frustrated or disappointed or angry, you can just hear from those words. Those are disempowering states. But if you're feeling hopeful or optimistic or curious or, you know, all of those are very empowering states. And when we allow ourselves to recognize that we're energetic beings, there are spiritual energetic beings in this human, beautiful human body we understand that recognizing where your energetic state is and knowing how you're approaching life and approaching conversations and approaching dreams and tasks and questions, is it coming from a disempowered, Mm -hmm. self-judgmental state or is it coming from an empowered state? And there are ways to walk up and down that ladder, but understanding your own emotions. And it's such a beautiful practice because we tend to ignore our emotions. We tend to stuff them down. We tend to, you know, try to not feel the ones that are uncomfortable to feel, but there's so much knowledge and depth and learning in them. And so having, giving ourselves permission to recognize how we're feeling is, I think, the next step because Mm -hmm. it's deeper introspection and it's so incredibly powerful as a practitioner in dentistry or as a speaker in the speaking world. When you can get in touch with how you feel, you've just now you've unlocked a whole new level of empowerment and impact that you can have on the world. So right. I think after getting quiet, after becoming aware of what's actually going on, really asking deeper questions of what's going on and how you're feeling about it. And then having the tools to be able to support yourself, to empower yourself, just walk up that ladder, that emotional vibrational scale to a slightly more empowering state so that your next question or action or thought that you choose to think can be a better feeling thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love that. Love that. I, I got lost in that. I, I don't I have to think about a question because I, <laughs> I was, I was so with you on that. I know. Well, we speak the same language, you Me and too. I, Vanessa. So I, I know, you know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. but I think it's so important for us to have this conversation as very yes. intellectual, brilliant. I mean, people who are listening to this podcast, I hope, you know, friends, you are already a curious, brilliant, intellectual, creative person. And we don't always allow ourselves to feel the feelings, but really that's the superpower that we're looking for to reach that next level understanding. Right. I, you know, here's what occurs to me is that we're talking about our gut and our our core. So whether it's our heart or our belly or whatever, like that central part of us and, um, Abraham Hicks, of course, is an incredible, um, one of the guides along the way for me. And it uh, makes me think about um, what I have learned there is that one of the best things our minds can do is pay attention to how we feel. It's our inner GPS, right? Like I'm sure we've heard this before. Um, and that's what that reminds me is that um, yeah. it, so that you'll know, does it feel more empowering? Does it, am I starting to feel lighter? That That's so valuable. Well, I know that you have an incredible group, um, a do-it-yourself and group coaching program combo, I believe it is with Radical Happiness. And I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about that because I'm anticipating that in that program, you can take us on those next steps. Tell us a yes. little bit more. Yeah, it's a 12 week program and I'm in love with it. (laughs) I feel so passionately about it. And really what it is, is it's a support and a guide for medical and dental practitioners to 
get in touch with themselves again, because I know so much of what we're talking about here on in this yeah. conversation is almost intangible, right? It's, it feels hard to even imagine if, if this is new to you, it's hard to imagine what, what does happiness mean or what, what do I want or what is my authentic truth? Like these, these words feel sometimes difficult to grasp. And so this course is intended to guide you through supporting you how to answer those questions for yourself. What is true for you? And then embedded in the course is also that nervous system regulation, like really practical, useful guidance in everyday life and everyday business and dentistry of how to regulate your nervous system when something triggers you, when you know a patient is aggressive towards you or uh, you have to deliver some really uncomfortable news or you need to let go of a team member or something that's activating to you, triggering to you and identifying when you are in a trauma response and how to support yourself in the moment when you're in a trauma response so that you can be your best for your patient in the moment and then know how to heal and support yourself outside of that, how to recover from that and walk through that so that you can have that healing and deeper insight. So it's meant as a course for much greater understanding of yourself, but also useful practical tools to be able to live in the world we live in as human beings. Right. But I'm just thinking how wonderful to be able to have um, solid uh, steps and strategies that when you recognize I'm spinning out. Yes. That you can lean into. Um, I a couple of nights ago, um, well, actually, yeah, opened my mail and had received a credit card I hadn't asked for and realized that my identity has been utilize to create a new account so even me just saying that shifts the energy in this room doesn't it for our listeners too I love I actually had those very human reactions like that's a big thing when identity is taken right but in the long run it's going to be an okay thing but but you know so we it's what you're talking about is it's like paying attention to how we're feeling and i recognized i was starting to spin and about 5 minutes into the oh my gosh i can't believe i recognized like oh it's like this you start to turn it to well they weren't very smart criminals because they sent the, <laughs> the card to me in my Straight home. to me. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been used. It's immediate. I've already shut it down. It's like, I, you know, I got the lock on my, like you can start talking yourself down out of the tree, I think is what you're talking about. So I, I love, love, love. In fact, I, I, I can't wait to go through your program. I, I've got to go through yes. your program. So I, I would so, love to have you, Vanessa. I'm so yeah, excited. But that's, that's exactly it. Right. And I think in those moments when we might spin out of control or go down the rabbit hole, as I, as I like yes. to say, is sometimes where we can add the self-blame and self-judgment, you know? Yes. And, and I think, mm-hmm. especially in medicine and dentistry, that can start that sense of overwhelm, anxiety, you know, depression, things like that, that I see in my colleagues. And it's those little moments exactly like that, that are very human occurrences. We can't, we can't control the events happening outside. We all feel, we all feel this. No one's immune. Absolutely. And you were absolutely validated to feel scared in that moment. Anyone Mm -hmm. in your situation would. Now, how do we support ourselves in that moment to access that? higher self, which you, you did so beautifully, but what are those tools that we can use in the moment uh, so that we can still be our incredible selves for the people who need us and love us. Love that. And, and too, before we leave this topic, I want to highlight too, like, I think for our community, uh, as speakers and consultants, um, you know, there's so many ways to apply this knowledge, right? So absolutely with a, with a audience member, that might be acting out or, you know, like there's so many ways in our world. It's not just like at home with the family or something, but it's like, it's, it's in our entire world. And so I find there's just so much value. Or even just stepping on stage to this day, I use the tools and the practices that I teach in my course just to get on, you know, last fall, I I had spoke to you about this, Vanessa. I spoke on a very big stage to about an audience of about 2000 people. And 
I had to dig deep for some of these practices because I was activated. Just the thought of having such a bigger audience for me activated me. And so I agree with you. I think there are moments in our lives where these are so applicable, even challenging as speaking to my 15 year old. (laughs) I use these, these practices because it does, there's, and there's no judgment, right? What's activating to me would be different from what's activating to you. Or, you know, we all have these little things that just trigger us. Um, But accessing our higher selves and being able to climb back up that emotional vibrational scale is absolutely where our power lies. And, you know, I wish that we actually could share this in schools, in education, because I think it's so needed for anybody to have access to these tools, to be able to support and stay in alignment with their, with themselves so that they can speak their truth so that they can honor their truth and so they can show up in the world as they are without that self-judgment and self-blame. Mm-hmm. I love that. And I want to challenge you to consider maybe you're the woman for the job to bring that to our schools. Maybe in a, in a future iteration of oh. what you're doing in your world, maybe there's a place for that because I think you're absolutely right. Um, I've often thought, I wish we learned emotional intelligence when we were you know, in kindergarten and all along the way out. Now that we know what we know, as we continue to evolve as a species, I think we we can um, make things easier for ourselves by helping those next generations be able to learn some of these lessons we learn more in the school of hard knocks as a, as adults. Yeah. yeah, and it starts with ourselves. Oh, yeah, as, it as does everything, right? As yeah. does everything. Yeah. And starts at home too, right? We can teach our children, we can share with our grandchildren, we can we can share with others. So Taryn, it's been lovely. And you know, we, you and I could talk for three hours. So yes, we could. <laughs> we probably should start heading toward a wrap up. And so I um there really is so much that you could share. And I would just ask you in our parting um question here. Is there, is there something we haven't shared that you feel in your gut? I'm going to ask you to tune in. Mm. What have we not shared that you feel might be the message that needs to be shared today for those who are listening in? Because I think you and I both believe so much in listening to that internal voice. Mm -hmm. You know, I think for me right now, the biggest message I think we all need to hear is permission to love yourself exactly where you are right now Mm -hmm. to know that wherever you are in your life you are exactly where you need to be and that you are doing amazing things you are doing amazing things and to give yourself that love and that respect and that compassion so that you can amplify it it, it has to start with our own self-love. And, you know, it's interesting because I often talk about self-love and then I try to think of another way to say it because it sounds so frou-frou, but everything yeah. comes down to love, whether it comes to conversations with a friend, conversations with a patient, conversations with a client or experiences, it comes down to love and it all starts with self-love. So giving yourself permission to just love yourself exactly the way you are in this moment, whether you're rushed or calm or happy or sad or fat or thin or stressed or peaceful, giving yourself just enormous compassion and self-love for where you are in the moment. Mm, mm, I love that. Thank you. That word love is um, so triggers some people, right? Like so for some people, they're like, ah, oh, well, like, the, but it, it, there's so many shades to love. And one thing that I've recently heard, someone shared to me when I was running late for something, she said, I'm happy to give grace. And that word grace has hung with me. And I feel like it's really synonymous with love in a lot of ways and like giving ourselves grace, right? Like I love that not holding ourselves so hard, uh, so harshly accountable. My first thought was, where did I, where was I too frivolous in giving my social security, right? It's like, you start immediately start self-judging. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. This has been so incredibly wonderfully warm and loving and great reminders and new knowledge and um, just exactly what we need right now. I just feel it so strongly. Thank you. Thank you so much for shining your light in the world in a very big way. Um, you, you really are a bright light, Taryn, and thank you so much. I mean, it just radiates off you, and um, <clears throat> I really appreciate you taking the time and, and sharing with our, with our uh, listeners. Where can we find out more about your uh, Radical Happiness program? Like, just give us the, all the URLs you want to give us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and thank you. Let You're welcome. Say thank you. That was very kind. The business of happiness. So my uh, website is the biz, B-I-Z of happiness.com. You can find me on social media. You can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube, the business of happiness podcast. All you have to remember is the business of happiness and you'll find me. And in on my website is information about radical happiness for practitioners. And my next cohort starts the end of May 2023. So awesome. if you're listening and you're thinking, oh, is happiness really possible in dentistry? And and the answer is it's definitely it's possible and it's possible for you. Happiness is possible. And if I could have found it after everything that I went through, I promise you it is possible. And it really is the goal. It really is everything. And giving sustainable. It's it's absolutely and it's you know it's it's what brings success. We thought that success would bring us happiness. It's actually happiness first that brings us success. So yeah, I welcome everybody. Please join me at the business of happiness. And I look forward to meeting everyone. Oh, what a great way. What a great note to end on. Well, thank you so much for being here. And thank you all for listening. And until next time, um, feel free to reach out with any questions about um, the Healthy Speaker Initiative info at the dental speaker.com. What's your email, Taryn? We didn't share that. Taryn at the biz of happiness.com. The biz of T A R R Y N. Excellent. I love your name, by the way. Thank you. Uh, and so thank you so much again for being here. And, uh, and we will see you next time. Until then, everyone, please be well and um, keep shining your lights. We need each of you. We need each of you um, bringing your purpose and your passion to dentistry. You will.